time for the panel discussion on cloud services opportunity for SMEs. I would like to call Mr. R. Ravi, Global Head and Strategic Initiatives, HCL Infosystems Limited, on the stage. Mr. Kapil Avasti, Security Consultant, Checkpoint Software Technologies. Mr. Sumit Saisan, Head, Pre-Sales India and SARC, Cyberroom. Mr. Mohit Puri, Country Manager, India SARC. And Mr. Anindam Datta, Chairman, Innovation Incubation Mentor. I would request Mr. R. Ravi to please carry forward the show. Thank you. Once again, <clears throat> I think we don't want to come in between you and your lunch. We thought we'll try and make, uh, give some food for thought so that uh, the lunch can be much more uh, palatable with uh, additional masala uh, in terms of. <clears throat> okay, uh, we heard uh, uh, some brilliant ideas and presentations, uh, various speakers uh, since last one and a half hours or so. Uh, this discussion I would like to kick off by saying that how we can uh, combine all these offerings, various technologies that are available and make it much more practical for enterprises and SMBs to leverage cloud and it should actually help run their business better as compared to what it is today. So that's what we would like to focus on. Uh, I would like to kick start I said by throwing uh, this idea saying that uh, uh, any enterprise, whether in whatever be the current state of IT, uh, I think they should move on to cloud immediately. That's my recommendation. Let's hear uh, views from others. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mohit Puri, uh, I look after WatchGuard Technologies for India and SAR corporations. Uh, I would also, you know, uh, agree. Uh, to, to the fact, to a certain extent, uh, uh, that uh, cloud is the buzzword uh, nowadays. Uh, people can, you know, actually do everything by stacking in a data center. Uh, they may not go for their, uh, you know, appliances in their premises. Rather than they can offshore it to a data center. Uh, you know, you could you could actually put in a virtualization for servers, you could actually put a firewall, a UTM device, everything can be actually, you know, uh, stacked there. Of course, you know, uh, what it would do is uh, save cost, because obviously uh, uh, people are becoming conscious uh, for saving cost as far as IT is concerned. So this would actually help him, uh, you know, help them, you know, leveraging, you know, uh, putting everything in a on the cloud or in a data center. Uh, that that would also be my recommendation. Thank you. Hello. See, actually, uh, my views on the cloud is that cloud is not about the data center or cloud is not about one specific, I know, controls which we are running into that we are doing consolidation and stuff. Cloud is a SKU, right? I it I buy a SKU for my business case that I want this service as for my organization and this is the screw for it, that's it. What goes behind it is what is the lookout for the ISPs. So what's very, very important for the customers who are actually going to adopt a cloud is that what kind of SLAs you're going to get. Is your cloud provider ready to provide you what is being offered in the data sheets, in the presentations and stuff like that? And how is he going to do it? We have been seeing security is actually the most mature one because we have already seen since ages that security monitoring and other things were outsourced into the cloud. This is, this is there from long time now. And 
already the security part is already matured to the level that people exactly know that what are they paying for and what are the SLAs they are going to ask for the vendors. But today there are things which is beyond it. Uh, if you are, it depends upon your business case that if you are a government organization, the challenges are a little more. If you are a you know, private sector, it can be a little easier for you because the compliances and regulations is not allowed. But the challenge is that are you going to get the service what you are paying for? Because when you move everything to the cloud, very, very important thing is that how is that I am going to promise you service deliverables? Somebody sitting in Cambodia is going to manage my system. What is his expertise? Or somebody sitting in India, an excellent expert is going to manage my infrastructure. It's all virtual. Right? We do not know from where data is actually residing. My own data is residing. The point is that the cloud, while it is very, very lucrative offerings, and we all know that it is irreversible trend because the cost advantage it offers, customers should be aware that what they are getting into. They should ask the right questions to the service provider that contractually, legally, and service-wise, how the infrastructure is, or service is going to deliver, whether it is PaaS, SaaS, IaaS, TaaS, whatever it is, how he is going to deliver, get the service and SLAs will be honored. And how the ISP or whoever is providing them the cloud model is geared to provide that service and what controls he has. At what point he can say that I demand that this kind of service uh, uh, no people should be uh, no, given to me, this kind of software should be given to me with this kind of uh, uh, no, minimum uh, no, benchmarks and stuff like that. So very, very important for customers to understand that contractual obligation, legal obligation and the service obligations and how they are going to deliver and then the cloud is really, really you know, very attractive because end of the day it offers a lot of crowd. So be aware, don't jump into the bandwagon without understanding what we are getting into. That's my take. Actually, uh, this is a very interesting discussion. I mean, the first speaker uh, broke into the entire uh, gamut of cloud by saying that we are already using it in various sort of services. Now, uh, essentially, I am a guy who drives startups. So I would be looking at a different, from a different angle rather than purely from the technology point of view. It's good that uh, such uh, facilities and applications available for SMEs. Let me narrate a very interesting incident which happened to me at the New York State University at Binghamton. So that is the university where the Watson School of Engineering, the entire corpus has been given by IBM because that is the IBM headquarters. So after my talk, which same number of people there and I thought there were some students there weren't. They were all deans and professors and postdocs. The Dean School of Engineering walked up to me with a question. So I was scared actually. So what is the question this guy is going to ask me? So before he could ask me, I asked him and with him there was a lady who was a tenured professor in the Watson School. And I said, tell me one thing that do you think Technology drives startups or is it business that drives starts startups? So he looks at me and he looks at his colleague and he says, you know, you should never ask intelligent people any questions. Thank God I didn't. The question which begets all of us is that all this that we are talking about, how will it help an SME? And somewhere we have to make it very clear to them that this is where they can really gain from the basic bottom line which is this is how they would save money. I mean le let's understand one thing that what is business? Business is revenue surplus. You can't generate revenue, you are not in business. All talk of technology, at right at the moment I am mentoring a team in IT. I am not an IT guy, but this team is IT. They are all three from IIT Bombay. They two, with, with, I, 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 the three together has eight US patents. Still they are finding it difficult to generate revenue. So I would request this wonderful panel and my colleagues in the audience that think of areas which match 
where you can benefit cost wise first if you can't be wary everything is possible it is also possible the one day my startups and people like you will own a jet private jet but before you start looking into it look at your own finances thank you yeah uh of course, uh, cloud is, I think, here to stay. In fact, I would agree with uh, most of the views. Uh, uh, in fact, the last one, uh, especially on the cost factor. So I would say there are a lot of things available, uh, like cloud, you talk of a hybrid cloud. Like it's up to, of course, totally up to you what you want to take to the cloud, right? So maybe you can keep your critical applications within the organization and take maybe other application to the cloud. Of course, it's totally up to you. And I'm sure there are a lot of offerings uh, available in the market. And I'm sure uh, uh, IT publication like VAR India also like time and again is giving a lot of information on cloud. So it's totally your call uh, as far as technology is concerned. Of course, uh, uh, the, the vendors are having a focus on the cloud. So like it's, it's, it's up to you, just pick and choose. So I think uh, we, we heard a lot of views from the panel. I, I think throw the uh, ball to your court. Can we have any questions, please? Great question. You are looking, uh, you are referring to cloud service providers, how much money they have made? Very, very early days. Currently, I think investments have been much more than what they have got. And typically, such investments work with uh, 24 to 36 months ROI. So very early days to comment on that, because many of these cloud service providers, at least in India, are less than a year old. If you are talking globally, I don't think there are any published figures yet. At least I am not aware of. If so anyone in the panel expected? member is aware, pardon? What is your expected revenue in the cloud next one year down the line? Since HCL is coming very aggressively in the cloud, other vendors are there. What is your expected revenue to roll out in a year? See, while I cannot uh, disclose them, I am not authorized to in the industry, disclose. In the industry, it's the industry size. The industry estimates are India is expected to touch 1 billion, that is roughly 4,500 crores in the year 2015. It is currently pegged at about uh, 400 crores uh, in the year 2010. So, which means a growth rate of somewhere around 60-70% uh, CAGR. That's the expectation. So, these so 500 crores to 4,500 crores in about 5 years. So, do you think the revenue should be from the SME sector or enterprise sector or public sector sector? Okay, here this cloud business what analysts consider is both public cloud as well as private cloud. So it is expected that more than 60% or more than two-thirds would be from private cloud. Only one-third will be from the public cloud. Now this public cloud, uh, the perception is it will be more from the SMB and less from enterprise. So far, uh, we have seen the trend which is reverse. So far, enterprises have adopted faster because their pain areas were current and they wanted things as of yesterday, uh, whereas SMBs are will probably take some time because they are putting their heart of their business, if, if, they are, if that decision making happens, they are putting their heart on the public uh, setup. So which is why we feel that uh, adoption by SMB will take slightly longer time, but once it starts, it is going to uh, be a logarithmic uh, growth. Is there any other views by panel members? I would be glad to. So do you, do you think that uh, after the implementation of the cloud services by the SME, the hardware selling pro product will be sell less? Actually, it will be more. <laughs> because by offering this cloud, we are encouraging uh, or rather lot of SMBs who are currently not automated to the extent that they would have loved to, they are getting a chance to increase their level of IT adoption and automation. So uh, even for accessing cloud, you would need more of the client hardware and their premises. So actually the hardware business will grow the more 